Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Chatterton, The Black Death and Meriwether Lewis, three plays by Charles Reznikov. Dane reads. And now I have this really weird edition. The cat's just come in. Hi, Biggie. Do you want to say hello? <laughs> oh no, Biggie, we're blurry. Aren't we? We're blurry. What? Who don't like being up here? Okay. So I have quite a strange edition. It's the Scholar Select version, and uh, basically it's because it's in the public domain. So they've like scanned it in, including like pages like this that just don't have anything on them. And like, you know, it's just very odd. It's a very odd edition, but I understand why. It's because they've got this book that's now out of print and that is in the public domain. And obviously if they wanted to do it properly, they'd have to type up the whole thing and they just can't be bothered. So they just scan it and then print it cheaply. But uh, I'm going to read you the blurb on the back here, and then I'm going to go through and take a look at the three plays here. So, This work has been selected by scholars as being culturally important, and is part of the knowledge base of civilization as you know it. This work was reproduced from the original artifact and remains as true to the original work as possible. Therefore, you will see the original copyright references, library stamps, as most of these works have been housed in our most important libraries around the world, and other notations in the work. This work is in the public domain in the United States of America and possibly other nations. Within the United States, you may freely copy and distribute this work as no entity, individual or corporate, has a copyright on the body of the work. As a reproduction of a historical artifact, this work may contain missing or blurred pages, poor pictures, errant marks, etc. Scholars believe and we concur that this work is important enough to be preserved, reproduced and made generally available to the public. We appreciate your support of the preservation process and thank you for being an important part of keeping this knowledge alive and relevant. So as you can see, that blurb doesn't actually say what any of this is about. So we're going to go straight into uh, Chatterton here and uh, I want to read you some excerpts because it's really poetically written and actually I know Reznikov as a poet first and foremost. So here we have Chatterton says, uh, to catch an earth tumbling on through space and suck it dry, I've made a Bristol out of rhyme and peopled it with nobles, sat at their feasts, talked and heard. But I am tired of make-believe, of being a scrivener's apprentice. Mother and sister, sempstresses, a family of servants, some mole from prison. But I shout the way Jews shouted at Jericho. There are birds in heaven, who rides Pegasus may catch some. Days like grains of sand slip through my fingers, while I am idle on this accidental shore where I was born. But I have feet to walk away, and maybe wings. Just I think it's really beautifully written, you know? What's interesting is this is like, these are all like one-act plays as well. And so uh, here we have scene three, Walpole given a manuscript. The poems of which I wrote you, Grey, those found in a church at Bristol, the work of one Rowley, a priest when Edward IV was king, spirited and harmonious. I wrote this Chatterton to send more. These came and this about himself, a poor widow's son apprenticed to a scrivener. The work irks him and won't I send money that he may buy freedom and spend time in writing. It seems he dabbles in verse or wants to dabble. And then we have Grey, who has been dipping into the manuscript. A forgery! This is modern as yesterday's gazette. Modern words, consonants merely doubled. Obsolete words taken from any glossary to Chaucer. Stuck into an idiom, modern as yesterday's gazette. And I like this, uh, this is Chatterton's sister reading a letter. And one of the things she reads, Do not worry about my clothes. London is not Bristol. Dress is not discussed here. If a man dresses well, praise. But if not, nothing is said. He is prudent. And then Chatterton, uh, when, when Hodge's wife asks him what he does, he says, I write music after a fashion, a sulky music made out of ordinary speech, the way a sculptor might make statues out of sand or carve wooden spools the housewife throws away. And then scene 14 is just a soliloquy from Chatterton that I want to read here. Ocean bitter salt water, larger than continents, incessantly troubled, in whose cold night the fish and knotted weeds have their being, feed it upon each other and drown men, loud in my own ears. At a little distance I am dumb, mouth open, shrill and dumb, as here those other waves are silent, an edge of white along the black water. Silence is more dignified than speech, certainly more dignified than ineffectual speech, and dignity is most dignity, when in the stiff persistent pose of death. Let me be dignified at last, let me, Chatterton, the scrivener's apprentice, the listener in at circles of the great in coffee houses, the great eyed watcher from the walks of those in carriages or on horses, should be dignified as any. He who was hungry shall himself give food, and who was badly clothed and sheltered shall himself be a lodging. Munificence of death, beautiful you were beautiful, see, and beautiful was your companion land. But what is beauty merely? A beautiful woman seen often enough, her skin is skin, hair hair, eyes eyes, nose nose, mouth mouth, blurred into a face. 
I'm a drunken man who leans aside vomiting and from his other side pushes the woman. And that tells you a lot about who Chatterton is. Uh, we then have The Black Death, which is obviously about the play. Very short play. All of these are short. So somebody says, uh, some get drunk on words, but I, like most, must have substance. I get drunk on words. I used to get drunk on beer, but now I don't drink. And then we have a scene between some count, uh, counselors, and I just really enjoy this because this is a story that I've heard before. He said, uh, the dying Turks besieging Kaffa tied their own dead instead of stones upon the catapults and shot them to the city. The Genoese scraped from roofs and cobblestones until the harbour bobbed with bloody scraps and white bellies of dead fish. We get this great stage instruction. The mayor vomits a stream of blood and pitches across the table. The others, aghast, leave. And one of the passers-by goes, uh, well, we have the guard. He goes, if good times pass, bad times also pass. And the passerby says, yes, we shall rebuild. We have the spider's stubborn mechanism. To stop and reason is to starve and die. So you are still on guard. The magistrates can still spare men to guard the emperor's precious Jews. And then we get a, a speech here by the drummer who's beating his drum while he does this. So he says, listen, all of you plague sick or to be plague sick. To my speech, like a Jew speech, voluble, hot and salted with the name of God, his famous countryman. Listen, you men and women, strutting like lunatics, each thinking himself or herself God or goddess, or at least king or queen. Be comforted, each of you, saith your prophet. You are not Atlas to the world's stability. Laugh, shout, scream or weep. Leap, stand, kneel or lie down. The heavens stay up, the world endures. Death comes suddenly or slowly. Be careless or take thought. Death is a plague with which we are all infected. What good will crying to the Lord for mercy do us? Has he mercy upon fish or upon beetles? The dogs are his, does he bother more about them? Just his tribes are equal. Eat, drink and be merry, it was said. Tomorrow we die. Tomorrow, they said, meaning someday. But for us it is literal, tomorrow we die. For shall we eat, what shall we eat and drink? Have we money? Take today, I answer, whatever you wish, for tomorrow you die. If you are made in God's image, be cruel, as he to just and just, wolves and cattle. Take whatever you wish, for tomorrow you die. And then just one final thing I want to share here, and this is from uh, the final play, Meriwether Lewis. Again, each of these would probably take, I would say, like, what, an hour to perform? And I just love the great line, I kill time until time kills me. So yeah, these three plays by Charles Reznikov. Honestly, unless you're a Reznikov fan, I can't see why you would pick them up. Or maybe if you're particularly interested in stuff about the Black Death. And that one was my favourite of the three plays. I can't imagine ever seeing these being like advertised as being performed and stuff. So I, I guess I will never get to go and see them, you know. But uh, if, I, if I could, I probably would. Uh, I'm glad I picked this up, but also I literally only got it because I just... Reznikov, he wrote this book called Holocaust that was so good that I want to read everything he did. And this is just the second of his that I happen to get to. So I would give this a pretty middle of the road 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of Chatterton, The Black Death and Meriwether Lewis by Charles Reznikov. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.